I think this, this is my stack at this point. Like this is what I want to be writing. It works for me. It makes sense to me. It's just, this is how I want to make websites from now on. So the past six videos I've made have been going over this Golang Svelte Kit app that we've been building out. I've been going over the data layer, the front end, all that stuff. And today we are finally bringing it all together and we are connecting the Svelte Kit front end to the Golang back end. And I'm super, super excited to show you guys what we built here. I think Svelte Kit is extraordinary. I have absolutely loved working with it. It has blown me away. It is the way I think about the web. It's the way I like to visualize things. It's simple, it's fast, it's clean, it's easy. Mm, I, I I love it. I really do. The Svelte has been extraordinary. I've loved working with it. I think you guys are going to love working with it, and I'm really, really excited to show you what we built here. Um, before we get into that, I do have a couple things I want to first go over. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not going to be diving too deep into the why in this video. A very common question I've gotten throughout this entire series has been, why are you using a separate Golang backend when you're using SvelteKit? Obviously, SvelteKit is a meta framework. It gives us access to a server, it gives us routing, it gives us middlewares, it gives us all these different things to where we could connect to a database, we could do our authentication, we could do everything we're doing on our Golang backend in our SvelteKit app. We don't technically need to have that separate backend. So if we're going to have a separate backend, why do we have this sort of double backend thing? Shouldn't we just be using basic Svelte as an SPA and then connecting that to the Golang backend? And in my opinion, I think SvelteKit is worth still using and I think it's worth using even with the Golang backend. And in fact, I think the two work really well together. So tomorrow I'm going to be making a video to make that case. But for today, we're just going to be going over what we actually built. If you've been following this series for any period of time, you've probably seen this. This is what we built way back when, when we did the authentication a few weeks ago, and now everything is hooked up to the database and hooked up to the backend. So when I go ahead and I sign in, it will bring me to the profile page. So all this is doing is just giving us a printout of what the authentication is doing. But the real magic comes when we hit view to do's and I can see all these different to do's. But now these are being hooked into the backend and we do a couple of really, really cool things to actually get these to work. So I can go ahead and here, I can add these in, I hit add, these will show back up. I can complete it, it'll get crossed off. I can delete it and it'll get deleted as you expect. So it's just some basic CRUD application stuff, but some of the stuff we're doing underneath and the way this data is being fetched and loaded on the front end is really, really cool. So let me show you some of the really cool things we're doing to make this happen. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Svelte, Svelte you does things a little differently than some other frameworks do. And I guess really uh, for the remainder of this video, whenever I just say Svelte, know that I mean Svelte Kit. I know that the two are different. Technically, Svelte is the SPA, Svelte Kit is the meta framework akin to Next.js. But for this video, I'm just going to be calling it Svelte because it's quicker. So when it, when we look at the Svelte app, the thing that it gives us is I like to think of this as it's built around get requests and post requests. So for those of you who, are, who aren't familiar, whenever you make a request to a browser, so whenever I go to localhost 5173 and I just load this page in Chrome, it's actually making a get request to that route. The way the web works is it's just a series of HTTP calls and those calls are under different names, uh, different method names like get or post or whatever. And Svelte really leans into this in a really nice way. So all of my different methods here, I typically have a server page.server attached to it. So within this page.server, we can go ahead and attach a couple to export a couple different functions. The first one we can export is this load function. This load function is called whenever we do a get request to this root. Whenever I make a get request to just the root of the app, which is just the uh, top level pages in here, it's going to call this load function. And this load function is what loads these to do's. So it's going through and it's making an external call to my to do's backend. I went over the code for the actual CRUD operations in the raw SQL in uh, this video right here, did that a couple days ago. But what this is going to do is this is going to fetch from our external database and then send it down to our front end. So now the front end is going to have access to this data anytime we make that get request. But that's important to remember and we'll come back to that later. So I have these get requests, but I also have post requests. Typically speaking, post requests are when you want to submit something or make a change on the back end. So down here, I have these actions. So these actions are all defined. So these this load and actions, they're all defined server side. And what I can do with these actions is I can define these functions that we can then call from the front end whenever we submit a form to do something on our back end to mutate some data. So you'll notice right here, I have a delete function, I have a complete function, and I have a create function. So the CRUD operations I need here, the load is the reading, and then the three that right there the, in the um, 
And then the three within the actions, those are the completing, the deleting, and the creating down here. So it's really, really intuitive server side how all this works. I go in here, I have my complete function, I'll read the form data, I'll go through, do all this stuff. I mean, these are basic backend routes, pretty similar to what you would expect. It's nothing too crazy. But the reason why I was talking about HTTP and I was talking about get requests and post requests is because of how we handle this on the actual front end. So when we go into our page.svelte, this is the actual component of what we're running. For those of you who aren't familiar with Svelte and you're just coming from React, this would be like the, the actual react component itself the page server is all server side code this is all client side code so we what we do right here is we just export this let data and what this is actually going to do is this is going to pull in the page data from our server so our server function right here load What's really amazing about Svelte is it has really great typing, so it knows that we're pulling the response body out of this. So it knows that our response body is gonna be an array, a to-dos object with an array of this stuff, and it knows we have that, so I can hover over data and knows exactly what we've got, and all of this is gonna be present at runtime, and I don't have to do any weird data fetching because it just fetches that on the get request. Because remember, whenever I go to the page, that's making the get request, so I can run all of it here. We can also abuse that to do some really fancy stuff like my sign out method. All I'm defining within my sign out directory is this page.server file. Um, for some reason, VS Code is weird. You have to like save and then it'll shut up, but I don't know. Weird stuff with the tooling, I'm sure it'll get fixed. But what we do right here is this, all I have in here is a load function. So remember that's called on a get request to the sign out route. And then what I'm actually doing is I'm signing the user out when they make that request and then returning a redirect so I go ahead and set the um, whoops sorry I go ahead and return a redirect right here so I throw a redirect back to sign in so if I went ahead right here and I just went to sign out it'll log me out of the app so you can do a lot of really fancy stuff here and it's super intuitive as soon as you understand the way the browser works and this gets even more intuitive when we look into the actual code of how we did the to do's so for those of you who are coming from a React background, you're probably familiar with the sort of pattern that if you use something like React Query or TRPC, you would typically fire a mutation and then do a bunch of different stuff, or you would just do it custom within a use effect, or you would just have an on submit that would then take a callback or do something like that. You would do a bunch of client side JavaScript to handle the actual submitting of a form. But what's really cool about this is I'm actually not using any client side JavaScript for my creation form. And I'm using a little bit for these two, but that's for something called, um, oh God, why am I stupid? Progressive enhancement. That's what it's called. I'm an idiot. So what we're doing right here is we're just using zero JavaScript for our title description and adding the to do. Then we have a tiny little bit for the progressive enhancement of the new to do of completing and deleting it to do to save us from having to do a whole extra server side call. So let me show you what we're doing and why that all works. So let's start with the easiest and most basic one right here, which is gonna be the form to actually create the to-do. So if you've used React, you're probably used to having to go through, and if you just do it raw, you're probably gonna have to do, okay, so you have to set your value and attach that to a state variable, and then you have to set an on change and attach that to a state variable. Or if you're using some library like React hook form or something like that, you can get away with just one line to attaches, but you have to attach all of your inputs to a form and manage them that way. But here, there's no JavaScript in here. This is just HTML. And all we're doing in here is we're just setting a title and a description and then a submit button. But the key is this method post and this action right here. So remember the form actions we defined within our page.server? That gets called right here. I'm just telling it, okay, make a post request to slash create. And remember, these are just get requests and post requests. So we go into our router right here, our page.server.ts. I look at my actions, I look at create. Well, now you can get an idea of what we're actually doing. So this form data is getting the form data out of our uh, input fields right here. So it's grabbing our title and it's grabbing our description. And we look at this right here, title, description, pulling it here, and then loading that into our body and sending it up to our backend. So there's no JavaScript on the front end, no nonsense we have to do there. It's all just taking form data, sending it to the server and then handling it there. And it's really, really fast and really, really clean. 
Because what we do is when we have something like this and we don't do progressive enhancement, what it'll do is it'll then refresh the page on success. So when we have a successful submit to this create endpoint, so when we make a post request there, it'll then refresh the whole page and reload this get request that we did at the top of it to get the, the new data. So when we go in here and I make a hello from video, this is from the video. When I create this to do, I hit add to do and it shows up right here because what we did is we made that post request, did all that server side stuff and then did the get request of load again to pull this back down. But you don't always want to do that. You don't always want to have a your forms completely refresh your app and go through all the H different HTTP things. So what we can do is instead we can do something called progressive enhancement. I remembered at that time. So progressive enhancement is basically a way for us to define the behavior of our form on complete. So um, that's a simplification, but it generally works for that idea. So I have two extra little forms here. I have a whole form for this complete button and a whole form for this delete button. So we do something that's a little bit fancy, but this saves us from having to do any client side JavaScript nonsense. And all we do right here is we're actually just going through and we're setting up this form right here. So this is gonna be a post request to complete. So this is wrapping the complete button. And remember, when we look at this route right here, uh, where is it, sorry. When we look at complete, complete is pulling out form data like the other one was, and it's pulling out the ID from the form data. But if you remember, there, there's no form input for ID. But what we can do is we can be kind of fancy with this, is we can make this little form right here, and then we can create this hidden input, set it to be an ID input, and then give it its value right off the rip because we know what the value of the to-do's ID is. So we can set that right here, and then just hide it. So there is a little input floating here in the void somewhere that has this ID attached to it, but this is all HTML. So it's super fast, super clean, super no issues of JavaScript nonsense. It's all just HTML. And then we just go ahead and we submit this whenever we hit that button. So this complete button is actually just submitting this form. And then it's gonna go ahead and fire the complete event, which we'll just go through and you know call the complete endpoint, do all this stuff. But then the key is when we return a successful uh, when we get a successful response from it, since we're using, we added this use enhance directive, we are now going to define the behavior of what happens when this function or when this form, uh, when this action completes successfully. So what we're doing right here is we're just setting use enhance. You can get a ton of different stuff in here. I highly recommend going and reading the Svelte kit documentation. It is phenomenal and they'll give you all the different things in here. We don't need most of that and all we need to do is just return the callback function. And what this callback function is gonna do, it's gonna take in the result and this result is an action result. Because remember, we defined the server side action, made the post request, get the action result, and now we can do whatever we want with it. So what I'm doing in here is instead of having to reload all of my to-dos because we just completed one of them, I can client side go through and update the list of to-dos I have in that data array, and I can update the one that needs to be completed to be completed. Completed. So what we do is we just make sure, okay, if the status is 200, which means that that's the HTTP sat status code of 200, which is okay. So that means that it was successful. And then we go through, we get the index of the to-do, and then we set it to be completed. This whole pattern is beautiful. I love how this works. We do the exact same thing for the delete button. It's the same little trick. We put the ID that's hidden right here. We go ahead and we set up the use enhance directive. We go ahead and then we just filter out the to-dos. So we just reset the to-dos array to get rid of that one there. We don't have to refetch it from the server. So. What I love about this is it just makes so much sense. Once you get your head around how all this stuff works, it is so clean, it is so fast, and the user experience on this is gonna be extraordinary. It is just serving them HTML. There's very minimal JavaScript in there. There's no giant bundle that you're dealing with. And the way you develop it is just so simple. For the type of apps that I build, this is perfect. And I really, really, really love this. So I highly recommend that you guys go through and take a look at this. Try adding a property to one of these things, mess around with the server side actions and the uh, load function, get used to how all this works and try and get a sort of picture in your head of how all this works. I might do a diagram video of this in the future, but you know, it's, 
there's just something so beautiful about this. I know I keep saying that, but it just blows my mind. I was sitting there writing this today and it's just extraordinary. I don't want to get into some React tirade or anything like that. I'll be super transparent. I'm pretty burnt out on React. I don't love it. I It's very annoying. But that's also just based on the problems that I have. I use stuff that conflicts with the virtual DOM. I have weird edge cases and I have stuff that doesn't mix super well. So obviously I'm going to be a bit burnt out on it and I don't want to be a part of the sort of React dogpile as they're going through their transition. I think generally speaking, RSCs and everything they're doing there in the React and Next world is a very positive thing and I think it has a very, very bright future. And I'm very excited to see what they do. I just don't think it's for me anymore. I think this, this is my stack at this point. Like this is what I wanna be writing. It works for me, it makes sense to me. It's just, this is how I wanna make websites from now on. So. Going forward, expect a lot more Svelte, expect a lot more Go. I'm very excited. This has gotten me excited about web dev again. It's gotten me excited to make content again. I absolutely love this stuff. To the guys at the Svelte team and everyone who's worked on this, tremendous stuff. It's truly extraordinary what you guys have built here. This is easily my favorite framework to date, and I cannot wait to get even deeper into it. Svelte is extraordinary, and I cannot recommend it enough. Hopefully you guys get something out of this. Please go check out the the repo that I have linked below. It's got the full breakdown and example of the Golang backend and the Svelte kit front end. Everything you need there to break the to get into this and use this stuff. Make sure you subscribe for more Svelte content, more Go content. We're going to be releasing new Svelte kit stuff all week. I've got a ton of really cool stuff coming, starting with the breakdown of why you should use Svelte kit over Svelte, and then a bunch more. Um, really, really great stuff. I'm just super happy to be excited about web dev again. This is awesome. Great stuff all around, and I'll see you guys very, very soon.